Okay, well, welcome back after the break. Uh, just before we went for our break, we were um, uh, looking at studying chapter uh, 10, the literal kingdom, and we were um, studying what Jesus uh, taught about the literal kingdom. And we looked at um, the, the signs of the coming kingdom, and we also saw how uh, Jesus was the Messiah who came, was prophesied uh, 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 as a king riding on a donkey in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. And we see that fulfilled in uh, when Jesus rode the donkey um, and entered Jerusalem. Uh, and we read about this in Mark chapter 11, verse uh, 10. So we'll continue uh, Jesus teaching about the literal kingdom. Uh, in Matthew chapter 26, verse 29, Jesus says, but I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the wine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my father's uh, kingdom. Uh, we also read about this in Luke chapter 22, verses 16, 18, uh, verse 29, 30, uh, where Jesus says, you know, uh, I will no longer eat of it until it's fulfilled in the kingdom of God. For I say to you, verse 18, I will not drink of the fruit of the wine until the kingdom of God comes. And I bestow upon you a kingdom just as my father bestowed upon me that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. So uh, in the celebration of the Lord's table, even as we partake in the Lord's table, it's basically an expression of our faith in the coming kingdom. It's also an expression of our faith that we shall rule and reign with him in his kingdom. And Jesus said that he bestows on us a kingdom just as the Father has bestowed upon him a kingdom. So each time we partake of the Lord's table, we are declaring that through all eternity, uh, we will sing praises and we shall reign with him uh, forevermore. So as believers, we live with this blessed hope of a place in his heavenly kingdom. Okay. Um, and we see that when uh, before Jesus ascended back to the Father after his resurrection, uh, uh, we read in Acts chapter 1, verses 6 to 8, uh, Jesus tells them uh, that, you know, uh, when they had come together, you know, uh, they asked Jesus, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, It's not for you to know the times and seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. Verse 8, he says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit come, has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. So just after the resurrection and before the ascension, the disciples had still not fully understood the two uh, phases of the coming of the king and his kingdom. Uh, they thought that very soon Jesus would set up a literal kingdom. And, uh, you know, to their disappointment, Jesus was, you know, about to leave and he had done and uh, he, he had done nothing, you know, about uh, the literal kingdom. And so when they asked him about it, you know, he pointed them to a different mission. Uh, he pointed them to the mission of proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom uh, in, uh, uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit. And he asked them to, you know, share the gospel, proclaim the gospel to the whole world. So this is the period that we are in. Uh, this is our present uh, mandate. And, you know, um, uh, and, uh, you know, at the time which the father has set in his own authority, you know, he will come back and uh, Jesus will come back and establish the literal uh, kingdom. Okay. And after he establishes the literal kingdom, then will come, uh, you know, the end as we read in First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 24 to 28 says, then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. 
for he has put all things under his feet. But when he says all things are put under him, it is evident that he who put all things under him is expected. And now when all things are made subject to him, then the Son himself will also be subject to him who put all things under him, that God may be all in all. So at the right time, the Lord Jesus, you know, will be revealed from heaven. He will come with the saints, you know, who have been taken up during the uh, time of rapture. And he will overthrow uh, the Antichrist and all the nations who support them. Uh, we read this uh, in Revelation chapter 19 and chapter 20. Uh, thus fulfilling what is spoken in Psalms chapter 2, verses 6 and 10, uh, 6 to 10. Then Jesus will put an end to all other rule and all other authority on the earth and he will establish his kingdom on the earth, subjecting his kingdom and his rule to the Father. So in verse 24, uh, 25, uh, we read that, the, you know, um, uh, here what Apostle Paul is writing, he seems to be, uh, you know, alluding uh, to what the psalmist is speaking about. Uh, maybe he's just in uh, uh, referring or indicating to what the psalmist has described in Psalm 110 verse 1. And so when we know that when Jesus comes and establishes the literal kingdom, you know, uh, the saints... Uh, uh, who, be, who believed in him, those who are faithful with what he has entrusted uh, to them while we are here on this earth in this present time, you know, they will possess the uh, kingdom. They would be uh, uh, given places of authority and dominion in the kingdom, uh, in the literal kingdom. And we read about this in uh, Daniel chapter 7. Uh, verse 18, where it says, But the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, uh, even forever and ever. Then the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven uh, shall be given to the people, the saints of the Most High. So the kingdom that Jesus is going to establish be an everlasting kingdom and the kingdom will be given uh, to the saints um, who will possess this kingdom forever and uh, ever. Uh, we read also uh, about this when Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, he says, Do you not know that the saints will judge the uh, world? Okay, so the saints of the Most High, uh, God will, or the King of the Kingdom will be responsible for executing, uh, you know, the earthly kingdom. And uh, all of this will finally then after, you know, will uh, after the thousand year millennium rule will cu culminate in the final great white throat judgment as we see uh, described in Revelation chapter 20 verses 11 to uh, 15. Okay, so uh, this is just briefly talking about the literal kingdom. I'm not going into much detail here, but if you notice um, the notes, it's just kind of a lot of scripture verses, uh, but I have um, kind of, um, you know, um, uh, um, explained uh, the, the 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 prophecies the covenant and all of that but i did not explain much about um, you know uh, the literal kingdom the coming of jesus christ the rapture and all of those things that will all be taught uh, you know for you when you take on the course um, uh, i think it is uh, the end times yes the end times the course on that then you will study in detail but I just basically elaborated on uh, uh, the the covenants, talking about the literal kingdom, just explained that uh, in little more detail. Um, uh, and yeah, and what was given in the textbook, I've just mentioned that and I've explained that to you as well. Okay. So we'll, uh, if you have any questions on uh, what is taught in chapter 10, please feel free to post it online students and in-person students in the stream page and then I will answer it. And also the e-learning students, you can post your questions in the discussion uh, tab and, you know, I will respond to your questions. Okay. So we'll move on to um, uh, chapter 11, the last chapter uh, in uh, this textbook. 
uh, or this publication that we are uh, looking at. Um, so uh, the kingdom mandate, okay, um, we'll just look at this chapter. It's basically a repetition of all that we have studied from chapter one right up to chapter nine. So just kind of uh, mention a little bit uh, and then, you know, uh, in brief and uh, we'll, uh, we'll be done with this publication and we'll move on to the next publication, Kingdom Builders, okay? So we know that there is a mandate on our lives, a commission, a responsibility, uh, a call on our lives that Jesus has placed and that is the kingdom uh, mandate. And Jesus put it for us this way. He said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 and 10, you know, uh, therefore pray uh, our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So when Jesus taught his disciples to pray in Matthew chapter 6, he tells them to pray, you know, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, so Jesus said, this is the way I want you to pray, which means uh, the mandate to see his kingdom come and his will be done on earth is on you and on me okay so in your home uh you know uh, when you pray uh you're uh, when you're saying god let your kingdom come let your will be done okay in my home in my family uh if you're staying in an apartment complex you say god let your kingdom come let your will be done in my apartment complex there are hundreds of people staying there and you can pray lord let your kingdom come you know let your will be done in this apartment complex you can also play pray this in your neighborhood even as you walk around in your neighborhood there are people living there some you know some you don't know but you can pray god let your kingdom come let your will be done in my community in my neighborhood you know in your office uh, you've got a lot of friends colleagues your bosses uh, some are good you know some you just can't get along with you can't stand them you know there are uh, all different kinds of situations that you walk in uh, uh, you know into your office when you are uh, dealing with people there as you're working alongside with people you can also pray say God let your kingdom come let your will be done in this um, place okay so that's a mandate that's on your life and mine it's our responsibility to see his kingdom come and his will be established in our lives and the lives of people that uh, who are living uh, you know um, besides us in in our neighborhood in our community in our city in our nation um, and also people we relate to on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis so when you pray that prayer you know you're going to be part of the answer to that prayer as well so as you pray thy kingdom come god says okay you know my kingdom is going to be released in and through you my kingdom is going to be uh, you know released in and through you wherever you go and you are going to experience my kingdom power you are going to experience my kingdom authority my kingdom presence uh, you know uh, 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 my kingdom values culture lifestyle is going to invade the place the territory the environment wherever he has place to wherever you are walking into you know or you are uh, being established um, there okay so uh, you know wherever we are whatever situation you enter in the king and his kingdom has stepped in because the kingdom of god is within you we've already spoken about this so this chapter is just going to be reiterating some of the things and then you know just uh, adding a few more uh, points with uh, <clears throat> Sorry. I'm just going to be adding a few more points um, that can encourage us, motivate us, you know, uh, 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 to be people who carry God's uh, kingdom, to fulfill God's kingdom uh, mandate. 
Okay, so there is a potential for God's kingdom to be, re, uh, you know, released into that situation, that circumstance, that environment, into that place, because you have walked in and the kingdom of God is within you. Each one of us are carrying God's kingdom. Uh, we are carrying the manifestation of the kingdom. We are carrying his authority and his power into that um, situation. Now, there is one thing that you and I uh, need to understand about the kingdom of God, that there is a dichotomy. Uh, now, this is a, it's a paradox. It's like two opposites. You know, on one hand, Jesus said in Matthew 18, we learned about it. He said, unless you become like a child, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. God. So there is this whole dimension of experiences, experiencing God's kingdom, uh, which requires us to be childlike. So we need to be childlike in some situations, some circumstances, you know, when we are experiencing for us to experience God's kingdom or uh, for us to, uh, for God's kingdom to flow out of our lives or to be a blessing to others. But then in uh, Matthew chapter 11, uh, Jesus also said something else. He said in Matthew chapter 11, verse 12, uh, that, you know, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Amen. So he says the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Um, uh, force. So there is a, there are certain areas of our life and, you know, our relationship with God where he just expects us to be childlike. Unless you are, uh, you know, childlike, you cannot enter the kingdom. But on the other hand, there are things in life where God expects us to be militant in the spirit. He expects you and I to be aggressive in the uh, spirit, which is, you know, unless we become violent in our spirit, man, we cannot, you know, uh, receive or uh, we cannot uh, benefit or we cannot enter into that uh, kingdom. So he said the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by uh, force. So this is something that you and I must begin to understand and begin to live. So we have to press in to the things of the kingdom. Now, why do I have to press in? Why do I have to be violent? Why do I have to take things by being violent in us, in my spirit, man? Why do I have to press in? Um, uh, is it because God is holding it back from me? Uh, no, it's not God who's holding it back from us uh, because Jesus said in um, uh, Luke chapter 12, verse 32, do not fear little flock for it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So it's our father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. He wants us to have it. He wants uh, you to have, uh, uh, you and I to have righteousness, peace and joy, which is uh, part of his kingdom, which describes his kingdom. He wants you and I to have what is in his kingdom. So it's not God who is telling us, hey, you've got to wriggle my hand uh, or, you know, you have to wriggle things out of my hand. No, uh, you know, but uh, what do we understand by this? You know, um, uh, there are two great enemies that you and I face. One, of course, you know that uh, we need to wrestle against principalities and uh, powers, uh, that they are demonic forces um, that are ready to hold back what God has in intended for us to receive the blessings that he wants us to um, have, uh, the blessings and the, uh, the power and the authority he wants us to have and walk in. And also what God has, uh, you know, uh, intended and designed for our lives. We know that the demonic forces are ready to hold that uh, back. So when they oppose us, we have to fight through to take what, you know, is ours you know, what is our blessing, what is part of our spiritual inheritance. Um, and God says, this is yours, you know, uh, and 
and Satan is withholding it from us. And that time what we need to do is we need to be violent in our spirit, man. We need to fight. We need to press in, you know, uh, engaging in warfare, using the, uh, uh, the, the weapons of warfare that God has given to us and also speaking God's word, speaking God's promises till we receive, uh, till we have what is us okay but there is also another enemy and that is you know closer to home it's just right beneath our skin and that is called our flesh okay so i said there are two great enemies that we face one is the principalities and uh, powers they they are the demonic forces that hold back what god has designed intended purpose uh, for uh, our lives and there is also um, something that is closer to home right just right beneath our skin uh, and it is our flesh and sometimes in order to experience the kingdom of God in order to receive what is in the kingdom of God in order to receive what God has said that you know is ours that we can inherit we've got to fight this enemy um, which is Satan and also the enemy that is underneath our skin that is called our uh, the flesh. Okay. Now, uh, you know, left to itself, the flesh will be so happy to take us all to hell. But, you know, uh, we need to fight that enemy in saying, you know, I'm not going to, uh, you know, feed my flesh. I'm not going to give in to the desires uh, of my carnal nature. Uh, to the desires of my flesh and that is why Jesus says that we need to crucify uh, uh, Paul says sorry that we need to uh, crucify this uh, flesh which means uh, you know we're going to, we have to keep telling ourselves that you know I'm going to crucify this flesh I'm going to crucify the ungodly desires of my flesh uh, in order to press in uh, to that kingdom, uh, uh, to press into the kingdom of God and take uh, what God says is mine, uh, to take what God has uh, purchased for me, what God has already received for me on the uh, cross. Okay. Now, there are areas in our life, um, there are areas in your life, areas in my life where God says, you know, I want you to be forceful, to press in, uh, to have what I have designed for you to have. And, you know, we must be willing to say, God, I'm ready to be forceful in the spirit. I'm ready to press in. I'm ready to fast. I'm ready to pray. I'm uh, ready to just keep declaring your word, to stand on your promises, speak your word. You know, I'm willing to stand as I ought to stand in faith and just declare and speak and decree. Um, and God, I'm willing to do what it takes to press in, uh, to see that kingdom blessing, uh, uh, you know, come into my um, in life or invade my uh, home or my relationships or my family or, you know, uh, uh, my health, uh, my marriage, my children, you know, or uh, uh, my finances, my job, whatever it is. You're saying, God, I'm just pressing in to see that uh, kingdom blessing come into my life and to inherit what you said, you know, is mine and what I can um, inherit. Okay. So any battle that you and I refuse to fight, or uh, you know, we have all uh, we have already lost it by uh, default. Any battle uh, you and I refuse to fight, we have already lost that battle. So by default, you know, many of us uh, we see battles in our lives, uh, and you know, we just give up. When we face these battles in our life, you know, we just give up. We throw our hands up in the air, and you know. Um, you may uh, say, you know, I'm not going to experience the kingdom in this area of my life. Or maybe I'm not going to see the blessing of God come through in this area of my life. Maybe this is my, you know, allotted uh, lot that I have received. I cannot experience the kingdom of God in this area of my life. And you just throw up your hands without a fight. And, you know, you've already lost that battle or you lost that uh, battle in that area of your life by default okay so sometimes you know we have to fight to see uh, his kingdom being expressed in our lives 
maybe your marriage, maybe it's your children, maybe it's your profession, your job, your career, uh, where you're saying, God, I know that you want my children to walk with you. I know you want my marriage and my home to be a place where there is righteousness, peace and joy. And God, I know that you've called me to be successful in my workplace uh, so that I can be a good testimony. Um, but God, that is being withheld from me. Okay. Uh, so the question is, you know, will you fight? You know, will I fight? Will or will we just walk away without a uh, fight? If we walk away without a fight, you know, by default, we've already lost a battle. And it's uh, not that God has withheld a good home or it's not that God has withheld a good marriage. It's not that God has destined your children to go to hell. No, it's none of that. But there are things in the kingdom that you and I have to fight for, to receive, uh, to claim it for us and to enjoy that uh, for our lives. So, uh, you know, like Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent are the ones who will take it by force. So you say, you know, uh, that is, you know, the battle sometimes is very long. It's very difficult. It's painful. You know, I fought enough. I'm ready to give up, you know, or you can ask this question. OK, you know, how long should I keep fighting? How long should I keep standing and fighting this? Uh, battle okay and Paul has an answer to this in um, Ephesians chapter 6 he says uh, brethren put on the whole armor of God and he says stand it says put on the whole armor of God and stand so the answer to the question is how long should I stand how long should I fight how long should I press in the answer is keep standing Keep pressing in, keep fighting till you win the battles, okay? Or till you win your battle. There are some battles that you and I have to keep, uh, you know, standing uh, and continuously just engaging the enemy, continuously, you know, just speaking God's word, declaring God's word. Uh, maybe, you know, even ask God what is the strategies that he has uh, for you to stand and win that battle and I'm sure God is going to give us the strategies he's already given us everything you know we need to fight um, our battles but sometimes we can also ask him for the strategies and he does give us the uh, uh, strategies that we need to fight our battles okay so there is a realm of God's kingdom where God requires you and I to be warrior-like, uh, to be warrior-like in the spirit. And he requires you and me to keep fighting. Uh, he requires you and me to have, you know, to do everything just to stand, to keep on standing and just fighting our battles. Okay. So there is a kingdom uh, mandate, uh, uh, you know, on each of our lives. And if you want to see the kingdom of God, you know, in the areas of your life, uh, you know, we'll have to press in. Sometimes you just have to receive it with childlike faith. Sometimes just trusting God, just waiting on God. Uh, but sometimes we just have to engage in battle, in warfare, just press in to the kingdom. So as we pursue um, God's kingdom, uh, uh, I just want to share that, you know, there are a few things that will help us to really uh, fulfill that mandate. So just a few things that will help us to fulfill this mandate. And, you know, uh, like we've already spoken about all of this in the previous chapters, I'm just going to be reiterating it. You know, a few things that we can keep in mind is, you know, it all begins um, with, um, you know, our submission to the king. It is where we say, God, everything in my life is about you in your kingdom, you know, um, and we're saying, God, your kingdom uh, is like that great pearl, that great um, 
treasure that we found in the field. Uh, the kingdom of God must become like that great pearl of great price in our lives. It must be like that uh, treasure that is hidden in the field, uh, something that is so valuable that nothing else, you know, compares uh, to that. So we are saying that the king and his kingdom should consume us so deeply um, that we say, God, I'm ready to give up everything else just to pursue your kingdom and that kingdom becomes the treasure you know uh, uh, the field where we are willing to leave everything behind uh, to just go after it so we we studied right uh, we looked at that parable uh, where um, uh, the person uh, finds his treasure in the field and he goes and sells everything uh, to buy that field so that he can uh, have that treasure so the kingdom of God becomes that treasure in that field where we are willing to leave everything behind uh, to just go after it. And every aspect of our lives must be centered uh, on God's kingdom. Uh, you know, everything must come into the subjection of uh, the king and his kingdom. Uh, just like Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to uh, you. Okay, so we just tell God, God, the reason we live, uh, work, uh, you know, whether you're studying, you know, uh, whatever you're doing, God, everything just revolves around seeing your kingdom come, your will be done in my um, life. So when our lives revolve around his kingdom, that's when we start fulfilling our kingdom mandate, you know. Uh, when we say, God, from this day forward, everything in my life is for the sake of your kingdom. I want to do everything, um, you know, uh, for the sake of your kingdom and everything that I do, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, or I want everything, uh, sorry, I, everything that I do to have uh, meaning and impact for the extension of your kingdom. So you were saying, God, from this day forward, you know, everything in my life is for the sake of your kingdom. And I want everything I do uh, to have meaning and impact for the extension of your kingdom. So in everything, whether it is, you know, uh, your studies, your job, um, uh, you know, you're just positioning yourself to make a difference for the kingdom. Uh, you're just bringing every part of your life, every area of your life in subjection to the king and his purpose. So as we fulfill this kingdom mandate, we must, you know, begin to also unleash kingdom influence. Uh, remember, the kingdom of God is within us. It's like that mustard seed. You know, it's very small, uh, but it has a great potential. It is destined to grow. Uh, and uh, also Jesus said that the kingdom of God is that, 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 like that leaven. You know, it can start small, but it has the... Uh, it's very small, invisible, but it can, uh, it'll have, uh, it has the capacity, it has the potential to influence and affect the entire lump of Tao. Okay, so uh, you and I are like that mustard seed, that leaven, and God has placed us uh, in, you know, in our specific homes, families, our neighborhood, you know, uh, in the jobs that he has given us. And he wants, you know, everything that he has given us, everywhere that he has placed us, he wants us, uh, you know, uh, to be an expression of his kingdom wherever he's placed us. So whether it's in our marriage, our family, our neighborhood, our community, our, our city, our church, uh, whether it's in your office, you know, he wants uh, it to be an expression of his kingdom and he wants his influence, his power, his authority uh, to work in and through uh, us. So, you know, you can ask God and say, God, how can I uh, be that mustard seed in my workplace? Or how can I be that leaven in my community, in my neighborhood, uh, you know, uh, just by simply living differently, by thinking differently, by living kingdom culture, kingdom values, kingdom lifestyle, you know, uh, by kingdom thinking, you can uh, influence uh, 
uh, you know, or you can bring kingdom influence into your uh, environment and wherever God has placed you, you can bring that kingdom influence into your, um, uh, you know, society, into your community, into the environment that God has uh, placed you. Or, you know, among your friends and your co-workers, you know, uh, you can become that leaven, that lump that will just influence, that will just impact, that will change them all uh, just by thinking kingdom, uh, uh, you know, uh, values, uh, living kingdom values and, uh, you know, kingdom lifestyle and just influencing those around you. OK, and we need to remember what we also learned that, you know, the kingdom that is within us is an overpowering and a pervasive kingdom. OK, it's an overpowering and a powering and a pervasive kingdom. It's unstoppable. God wants to release that influence in and through us. Uh, you know, Jesus said we are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Uh, so we can start praying and say, God, let your kingdom come. Okay, uh, when you see your boss, when you see your colleagues, pray for them and say, God, let your kingdom come in their hearts and in their uh, lives. When you look at your children, your spouse, your marriage, your family, say, God, let your kingdom come uh, in uh, into my marriage, into my family, um, uh, you know, uh, into my children, into their hearts and their uh, lives. So as you do this, you know, you move to the next level of kingdom advancement or kingdom invasion, okay? And when you do that, you begin asking God for strategies, for methods and ways to bring his kingdom into your sphere of uh, influence, okay? So uh, we are just saying, God, you know, we know that God's kingdom is overpowering a per pervasive kingdom. And you're saying, God, let your kingdom come, uh, you know, in the hearts and the lives of people that I'm, uh, that I'm working with. And even as you do that, you are basically, you know, moving to the next level. You know, you're moving to the next level of kingdom advancement or kingdom invasion. Uh, and then, you know, you just begin to ask God for strategies, for methods, for ways to bring his kingdom uh, into your sphere of influence, okay? Now, the goal is not just to influence uh, people, you know, uh, uh, around you, but also to help them to encounter the king and his kingdom, okay? Yes, your Praying and asking God for his kingdom to come into the lives of your boss, your colleague, your neighbors, uh, the community that you're living in, the neighborhood. But you need to go to the next level and say, God, uh, you know, um, uh, I just... I don't just want people to be influenced by the way that I think and I live, but I want them to encounter the king and, you know, his kingdom and be part of your kingdom. OK, so we just don't stop at kingdom influence where we are an influence, though it's a good start. But we must ask God for ways to advance his kingdom into the hearts and lives of the people. Uh, around us. So God will give you some simple ideas. Maybe, you know, you can gather a few friends during the lunch break for a Bible study, or you can start having meaningful conversations and then point them to Jesus. Or maybe you can, you know, uh, 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 some family is going to some um, grief or some problem or some situation in their lives or you know they're going through a broken marriage or broken relationship whatever you can step in um, you can you know uh, pray for them and then slowly you know you can um, through the meaningful conversations you can point them to uh, Jesus so our ultimate objective is for the kingdom of God to invade the hearts and the lives of people so that they, they can experience the king him uh, self okay so it begins first of all by just bringing everything in subjection to the king where you're saying god everything in my life is about you it's about your kingdom and uh, you know that god's kingdom uh, has become that pearl of great price in your life and it's like uh, become like that treasure uh, in that field and nothing less and then the king and his kingdom you know when they just consume you where you say god i'm ready to give up everything else and pursue your kingdom uh, you know uh, 
uh, for me, God, everything uh, about your kingdom is like that treasure in that field where I'm just willing to leave everything and we'll just go after your uh, kingdom, okay? Where everything in our lives is just now focused and centered around the kingdom of uh, God, okay? And then, you know, we move on uh, from there uh, to where, you know, we are... Um, just uh, influencing people um, and just not just influencing them, but then moving on uh, to, you know, uh, the next level of kingdom advancement or kingdom invasion, where we are bringing them into an encounter with the king and the, the his kingdom as uh, well, okay? So we just don't stop with kingdom influence. Uh, you know, that's a good thing. It's a good start. But then we need to, you know, begin uh, from, uh, you know, being an influence in their lives and then moving on to showing them what the kingdom of God is, um, you know. Um, and so when we take that step, you know, you, you can just ask God, you can say, God, show me how I can bring this invasion of your kingdom among these people that I live in. And God will give you some simple ideas and then you can do that like I already suggested. And, you know, you can uh, lead them, uh, you know, to knowing God. You know, uh, I'm very inspired by this testimony of uh, Tommy Tenney. Uh, he was a pastor for over 10 years and then, you know, he went on into being an itinerary uh, minister just traveling around as a revival preacher, you know, emphasizing um, uh, revival and unity in the body of Christ. And, uh, you know, God had given him so much of favor uh, and he would just preach among the Presbyterians, the Baptists, the Charismatic, the Catholics. And, you know, um, uh, when he would preach, you know, to all these group of people, you know, God had given him so much of favor that, you know, people would uh, uh, would just receive uh, 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 the Lord Jesus into their uh, lives. And finally, you know, God spoke to him and said, you know, Tommy, uh, I want you to do uh, much more than what you are uh, doing uh, presently. Um, you know, uh, but Tommy just, you know, was surprise and he said god you know my whole uh, entire year is packed you know uh, his um, uh, uh, you know his preaching schedule for the whole year is packed it's filled he said i can't take on any more preaching engagements um, and you know uh, tommy tenney had already written so many wonderful books that was a blessing in the body of christ um, and you know he was asking god god what more do you want me to do you know i'm i'm already doing so much and uh, you are uh, you're telling me that you want me to do uh, you know much more and uh, you know um, god uh, god tells him that you know uh, hey your schedule you know um, uh, look at your schedule and he tells him you know 90% of your time is spent in ministering to believers is spent in ministering to people who already know about Jesus and so God is saying you know now I want you to look outside the church do something you know um, uh, for people who are outside the church and then he begins to pray and you know God moves him uh, you know, and uh, he uses his uh, writing skills, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, to do what God is asking him to do. So God tells him, you know, uh, use your writing skills to, uh, uh, you know, minister not just to the body of Christ, but also to those outside. Um, so Tommy Tenney is, uh, you know, um, uh, just stirred up in his spirit uh, to spend time studying the book of Esther. And uh, he comes out with uh, this book called Hadassah, One Night with the King. So he writes this novel uh, after his meditation or on his meditation in the book of uh, Esther, studying the book of Esther. And, you know, he calls uh, it uh, as... Um, you know, Hadassah, One Night with the King. Uh, he writes this novel. It's a Christian novel. And he re releases it. 
And then uh, soon after he releases it, he gets a call from uh, Hollywood saying that, you know, uh, they read their book and they want to make it into a movie and they want him to come, uh, you know, uh, and just uh, speak to them about that book. So can you imagine, you know, Hollywood calling a revival uh, preacher? But there is Tommy Tenney sitting in front of these uh, movie superstars, uh, you know, uh, and all of these producers, uh, directors, teaching them about the book of Esther and telling them what Esther is uh, all about. Uh, what a strategy, you know, they would never call a preacher to come in otherwise, you know. So likewise, you know, God can give us something which, uh, you know, uh, uh, will just open up doors so that people will want to listen to what, uh, you know, you have to say about God. And as you do, the Holy Spirit will work in their lives uh, to put their faith and trust in uh, Him. You know, it could just be something very small and simple, you know, but you can pray and ask God, God, show me how in my world, in my sphere of influence, what do you want me to do so that a door can be open for me to see the advancement of your kingdom in the hearts and lives of people. And God will give you some ideas. It might be simple ideas, but that's how you and I can, uh, you know, uh, use these simple practical ways uh, to bring uh, people uh, into his kingdom and thus establish the kingdom mandate, thy kingdom come, thy will be uh, done. Okay, so even as we bring everything in our life in submission to the king and his kingdom, you're, you know, being a uh, kingdom influence in your sphere, in your circle. And as you begin to work out uh, the strategies that God is putting in your heart, you know, in your mind um, to see the advancement of the kingdom of God. Also remember that his kingdom comes with power because the kingdom of God that is within you is a kingdom of um uh, Power. Okay, we already learned about it that uh, the kingdom that is within us is a kingdom of authority, it's a kingdom that comes with um, power. So we can expect the manifestation of the kingdom of God, uh, the power of His kingdom to come in and through our um, lives. Okay, um, uh, now I just want to share another story. This is about Pastor Bill Johnson's church in Redding, California. And there is a testament that he had uh, shared uh, some time back uh, about, uh, you know, uh, 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 shared a testimony about an elderly veteran uh, who is in the U.S. Army. Uh, and he was in his final stages of cancer. Doctors had given up and he was ready to die. And, uh, you know, uh, he and his family uh, lived in the neighboring town of Redding, uh, California. And his son uh, told him, you know, why don't you just go to uh, that church in Reading? You know, uh, I've heard that they pray for uh, sick people. Uh, why don't you go there and, you know, just get them to pray for you? You know, uh, maybe you can be healed. Now, um, this uh, elderly army veteran uh, did not believe in God, um, you know, and um, uh, he was not very keen or excited about it. But he thought, okay, this is my, uh, this is the last uh, request of my son. So let me just, you know, uh, grant his last wish. And he said, okay, fine, um, I'll go. Uh, so they took him uh, over to Bethel Church in Redding, California. And, you know, uh, there in Bethel Church, they have uh, something called the healing rooms uh, where people who come, you know, uh, uh, for healing are prayed for. So even as they brought him there to that healing rooms, you know, the people, uh, uh, the, the healing room, sorry, the people gathered around him and um, uh, they, they asked him if they could, uh, you know, pray for him. He said, yes, yeah, sure, you can pray for me, but don't touch me. He didn't want anyone to uh, touch him. So even as they began praying, you know, he did not close his eyes. He was looking at each one of them, just making sure that nobody touches him. Um, and, you know, when as they were praying, he just felt very peaceful uh, in his heart and in his mind. And, you know, that led to him just closing his eyes. 
And at that moment, when he just was closing his eyes, there was a 12 year old boy, you know, who had not been, uh, 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 you know, he did not know what is happening there. He did not know what was the instruction this elderly person had given that moment. He does not want anyone to touch him. But he just comes running through the crowd. He just breaks in through the crowd and he comes and puts his hand on this, uh, you know, uh, this army veteran who's, you know, huge and big. And uh, as soon as this young child who's 12 years old just lays his hand, you know, this man just falls down, uh, boom, on the ground and he's knocked out for 45 minutes. And then when he wakes up, you know, <laughs> he looks up and he says, who touched me? And, uh, you know, and they all pointed out to this 12 year old boy. And obviously he could not do anything because he was a 12 year old boy, a kid. But uh, after that, he went back and, you know, uh, as he went back, he said he was feeling a lot more better. So he goes back to the hospital because he's feeling well, good and healthy. He goes back to the hospital, gets himself checked up. And the doctors, when they check him, they find no trace of cancer in his uh, body. It is completely uh, gone. And, you know, uh, uh, now this hospital with 14 doctors, you know, all in this, um, uh, in this field, um, uh, researching on cancer, treating cancer patients, and also, um, uh, uh, you know, doctors in the other areas, they were just too shocked. They could not just take this, you know, they just kept calling him uh, because they wanted to, uh, you know, research more on his case. They wanted to find out how this cancer just uh, left him when they said they could not do anything more and that he would die soon. So even as they kept on calling him back for investigations and kept questioning him, uh, you know, he got a little tired uh, about this whole thing. So he just uh, got fed up as well. And he writes a brochure of who he was, you know, what happened to him and, uh, you know, uh, how he went to uh, the healing room uh, at uh, Battle Church and he puts Battle Church on the map to show people if they want to go and he he does, he prepares a brochure, puts everything there, then he goes back to these doctors and he gives them the brochure and he says, you know, if you're looking for any further investigations, it's all here. The information is all here. Just contact Bethel uh, Church. So, you know, um, this is what happened. You know, this 12-year-old just lays hands on this person and God did something. Okay. So sometimes we can think, hey, you know, uh, it's not possible, you know. This, this, the, he's just a child, you know, it's not somebody who's grown up and he's not somebody who's big. But, you know, we need to understand that, uh, you know, we might be small, we might be insignificant, we might be not too spiritually mature, but the kingdom of God that is in us is a kingdom of power. And even as you and I fulfill the kingdom mandate, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, the kingdom of God will be released. The power of the kingdom and the authority of the kingdom will be released in and through us. Uh, it's not for us to think that, you know, we are going to establish his kingdom in the hearts and lives of people through our efforts. No, it's not our efforts, but it's God's power. Um, it's God's uh, uh, um uh, the Holy work of the Holy Spirit that will, uh, you know, uh, work in this people's life that we are ministering to and, you know, will establish his kingdom, will lead them into his kingdom and they will know the king of his, of the kingdom. Okay. Uh, because after all, it's all about the king and his kingdom. You know, at the end of it, it's all about uh, him. It's about uh, uh, Jesus. Um, and that's what Jesus said. Remember, he said when he taught his disciples to pray, he said, thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. So it's all about Jesus. You know, it is his kingdom. He is the Lord of his kingdom. It's not about us. It's not about our reputation. It's not about, you know, our church. It's not about all people's church. It's not whether you are liked or whether you are accepted by people or adored by people. It's not all about that, but it's all about his kingdom. It's thine, thy kingdom come, thy will be uh, done. And so that is the mandate on us. And we need to pray thy kingdom come. And, you know, even as we pray uh, this, what 
uh, Jesus has taught it, we do it from the perspective that, you know, um, we just, um, you know, uh, uh, are willing to submit. We are willing to, uh, you know, just be um, uh, to influence people by the way that we live. And we are willing to step in to take uh, the strategies and use the strategies that God is giving us to unleash his kingdom power and his kingdom domain in the spheres of influence that God has uh, placed us. Okay. So uh, even as we do this, we know that, you know, uh, he gives us the power and all glory belongs to uh, him. So we don't worry about ourselves. Um, we don't worry about the, you know, whether it's going to happen, whether the miracle is going to happen, the breakthrough is going to come. If I pray for uh, this person, don't worry about that. It's not about your reputation. It's not about your kingdom. It's not about uh, uh, your influence. But we are just going to be uh, faithful to the mandate that God has given to us. And we stop worrying about ourselves uh, and we just pursue his kingdom we pursue seeing his kingdom uh, coming in the in and invading the hearts and the lives of people and you know uh, what matters in the end of the day it is his kingdom his power and we know that even as we are faithful and sincere you know the glory is also his okay so that is about uh, the kingdom mandate so let's just got take God, uh, you know, uh, uh, with his, at his word, what he's asked us to do, fulfill his mandate. Uh, you know, uh, uh, as we do that, the first thing is submission uh, in every area of our lives. Just be willing to have his kingdom, uh, you know, uh, 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 be everything in our lives, uh, do everything uh, so that his kingdom will, uh, you know, invade uh, the spheres of influence that he's given to us. And, you know, we just become people of influence by living uh, kingdom lifestyles, kingdom values, kingdom culture. Uh, and, uh, uh, and as we do that, you know, we step in uh, to the next level where we're saying, God, you know, we want your kingdom power and authority to invade in the hearts and the lives of people that we are uh, in contact with, we are ministering to, we are in relationship with, uh, and we are interacting uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And even as we do that, you know, God will give us the strategies and he will receive all the glory and honor because it is his kingdom and all dominion, honor, power, uh, and glory belongs to him alone. Okay. So that is the, the, the last chapter, that uh, uh, chapter 11, Kingdom Mandate. Um, so we are done with uh, the first publication. And uh, for our next class that uh, is on Wednesday, we will begin with um, uh, the second publication, Kingdom Builders. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for giving me this opportunity to just... Uh, teach these two uh, lessons. Uh, thank you for listening to the lectures. And if you have any questions, feel, uh, please feel free to post your questions and I will answer them. Thank you.